Welcome back to my series of tutorials on how to create mods for the Binding of Isaac. If you haven't seen the previous episode, where we learned about how to make a more advanced passive item using Lua, you can view it by clicking the button in the top right corner. In this video, you'll learn how to make a basic costume, no Lua required. It can get pretty tricky, so make sure to listen closely and rewind if you need to. A costume is an additional appearance that the player can have over their normal sprite. For example, the item Sad Onion gives you some tear droplets next to your eyes, but the character will still look like themselves. Because there are so many ways Isaac's appearance can be altered, costumes follow a layer system. Costumes are applied on specific layers of a character. Each layer can only have one sprite rendered on it at a time. On screen, I'm showing an ordered list of layers, from lowest priority to highest priority. High priority layers will appear above lower priority layers. Glow is the lowest priority, while back is the highest. Also take note that, because only one sprite can be rendered on a layer at a time, there is yet another priority system for costumes. You can give a costume a priority number. A costume with the higher priority number will have its sprites shown instead of the costume with the lower priority number, if those two costumes have conflicting sprites. If two sprites conflict and their costume's priorities are equal, the costume added most recently will take priority. Okay, with all that technical stuff out of the way, let's implement our first costume. I already have a spreadsheet for the costume prepared for this tutorial. The costume will be a red exclamation mark on your forehead, similar to the costume for the item marked. Because it's so similar, we're going to put it in the same layer as that costume, which is head 1. I'll go over how the spreadsheet is set up later in this tutorial, so don't worry about that right now. If you ever feel uncertain about what layer your costume should be on, then check out the Isaac Costume Reference Spreadsheet, linked in the description. It shows every costume and the layers their sprites reside on. Find a sprite similar to yours and judge if you should put it on the same layer. Along with a costume, I also have an item prepared for this tutorial. As you may expect, it's also a red exclamation mark, and it doesn't do anything as there's no Lua in this tutorial. Anyway, let's create the costume. We don't want to put the costumes and M2 file directly in the resources folder because that's a bit messy. So instead we'll create a new folder in the resources slash GFX folder titled characters. So navigate to your mod, go to resources, GFX, and make a new folder titled characters. You may notice I also have an items folder, and that's because I already set up the item I mentioned earlier. Inside this characters folder, next we're going to create a new folder here named costumes. In this folder, we'll store all the sprite sheets for our costumes. Opening up costumes, you'll see I've already put the costume in the folder. Now, I'm going to open up the costume in A-Sprite, which is a pixel art editing software, and show you why it's structured the way it is. So costumes have their a 2 file set up in very specific ways. You have to name the animations you want to target, like walking and shooting, the same as how they're named in the player's a 2 file. The frames of the animation also needs to be the same as the player's so that it doesn't look weird. Because of this and some other nuances, it's much easier to just use a template instead of recreating the base of a costume every time. That's why I've created a GitHub repository that is linked in the description that has templates and a bunch of sprite sheets you can use as a base. All right, I've opened up GitHub. So we're on the repositories page here. Come here and click this bright green code button. Then hit download a zip. Extract the zip wherever you want. All right. Now we have the repository downloaded, and we can access all the templates. Let's open it up. This repository has a lot of stuff in it, and it's all explained inside this readme file here. If we navigate to full, normal, and full head, and then we put that under the costume here, as you can see, the exclamation mark aligns perfectly with the head. This sprite here is being used as a guideline on where the exclamation mark should go. And then when you're done, you can just remove the guideline. Okay, we have the sprite sheet in place. Now let's copy the template and create the costume. 
Once again, go to full, normal, and full head, and copy and paste it to the character folder next to your costumes folder. Make sure to rename it now so you don't forget later. Next, we're gonna edit the costume template. Open the template in the Isaac Animation Editor, which you can get to by navigating to the Tools folder in the game's directory. First things first, replace the spreadsheet up here so that it points to the right file path. Select it, hit Replace, and navigate to the right spreadsheet. Now let's look at the animation names. As stated before, they're named after the animations used by the character itself. Now let's select one. These frames here are on a layer named Head. Remembering the Layer Render Priority infographic from earlier, you'll name the layer the frames are on to be the layer you're trying to target. We're trying to target the layer Head 1, because that's the layer the costume for Marked is on, so we'll rename this layer by double-clicking it. As you can see, it renames the layer for all animations. Okay, the costume's anim2 file is finally set up. Remember to save, and let's get into implementing the costume. Come back to your mod's content folder and open up the items.xml file. So, content, items.xml. In here, make sure you've defined an ID for your item. Just like how the item's ID is used for finding its death portrait sprite, like we learned in the last tutorial, the ID of your item is used to find what costume it is linked to. Remember your item's ID and create a new file in your content folder. Name this file costumes2.xml. This is where every costume in your mod will be defined. All right, I've opened it up here. Like in all XML files, costumes2 needs an opening and closing tag. This tag is named costumes, so costumes. In this tag, add an attribute named anm2 root and set it to gfx slash characters slash. The anm2 root attribute tells the game where in your resources folder it should look for costumes. Now close this and add a closing costumes tag at the bottom. Now let's define a costume. Create a new tag named costume. First, add an attribute named ID. This should be the same as the ID of the item your costume is for. So in my case, zero. Next is an attribute named anm2 path. This is the path to the costume's anm2 file from the root defined up here. For me, it's exclamation underscore mark underscore item dot anm2. Next up is the attribute type. This tells the game what the costume is for. It can be set to either passive, active, familiar, trinket, or none. Since our costume is tied to a passive item, we're gonna set this to passive. Type equals passive. Finally, we have priority. As mentioned earlier in the video, if two costumes have a sprite on the same layer, the one with the highest priority will appear instead of the other, or the most recent one if two costumes have the same priority. Most costumes in the game have the priority set to zero, so unless your costume is very important, you should do that too. Priority equals zero. All right, that's everything. Remember to close the tag, hit save, and let's go into the game to test it out. All right, I spawned the item in here. Picking it up, the costume will automatically apply to the character. After removing it from my inventory using the debug console, it automatically disappears. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can find all the templates in the description, and I'm happy to answer your questions in my Discord server. I appreciate all the support from these tutorials. It really means a lot to me. That's all. Thank you and goodbye.